Hi, my name is Leon Monroe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com, and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. A warm welcome to you if you're new and a returning watcher. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you find the content that I provide every week useful. It helps the YouTube algorithm, and it's a great way to support the channel and a nice free way to support the channel. Anyways, let's get on to our fundamental analysis for the week and uh, looking at the week ahead. Uh, minutes from the Fed and the European Central Bank will be in the spotlight next week, uh, while policymakers in Australia and Malaysia uh, meet to set interest rates elsewhere. Worldwide services PMIs will be in focus, as well as inflation rates for China, Brazil, Mexico, Turkey and Russia. Other important releases include US jobs openings, uh, Canada employment data, UK monthly GDP, as well as Germany factory orders and trade balance, Japan current account and Australia building permits. So for the currencies that we do trade um for example the us dollar you know the fed meeting um minutes are going to be definitely uh, watched as well as the ecb um also as well um if you are celebrating the 4th of july happy independence day to you and uh, from a, from a trading perspective um tomorrow uh, monday should be probably a uh, a quite a quiet day bank holiday um so um not in the uk but i think it's a it's a holiday in in the states so it's probably going to be a quiet day and we're heading into summer so summertime we tend to have low volatility as traders generally every year go on holiday not sure whether they can in droves this year simply due to covid restrictions but typically you have um lower volatility markets throughout the summer because there's uh, there's less uh, traders at their desks but um uh, if you do so if you do see um you know prices not necessarily moving anywhere or moving in tight ranges then um this is this is basically what um, uh, the reasons why anyways but hopefully there should be some market moving news especially for example in Australia um, as well as for example Canada uh, and the UK and the EU um, so moving on to our uh, technicals and a bit of deeper dive into what's happened in the fundamentals last week and potentially in the future let's move on to the dollar index and the dollar index is a measure of dollar strength against uh, various currencies like the uh, pound, the yen, the euro and it's good to keep an eye on the dollar index because um, it gives you um, uh, an overall picture of dollar strength or weakness against those currency pairs right so um, looking at this as confluence we can see that since the Federal Reserve has hinted at hiking rates uh, last week at I think the um, uh, the FO is it their speech uh, was it their speech uh, that they did it at yeah um, on the 16th of June, uh, they've uh, the market has literally seen that as a, uh, a as a buy uh, trade because hiking rates generally or should have the effect of appreciating a currency. So this is the reason why you're seeing um, this you know these higher highs uh, being made. So just from a technical analysis perspective, we can get kind of get rid of that uh, supply zone. And I always say to traders that there is no technical analysis analysis that's going to stand in the way of fundamental analysis um, and fundamental drivers as well as risk sentiment drivers a lot of traders just keep trading uh, supply and demand zones what you're the whole point in this is to understand where value is future value is and uh, current uh, uh, value as well and understand that if the Federal Reserve are hiking rates and that is generally positive for a currency, then you want to really look for buy trades, right? You want to wait for demand zones, ignore the supply zones. There's no point in trading supply zones. I don't care whether, you know, prices do react from there and go down a bit. The point is, is that the path of least resistance is to the upside and you're more likely to get caught going, you know, going short or lose money going short than you are to go then going long because all the banks and financial institutions are going long right so you want to ride on their coattails so the, the point and i guess where how you really look to trade the, the, the dollar index technically is 
wait for prices to come down potentially into a demand zone, then look for um, as confluence and then look for buy trades um, on the dollar yen, dollar Swiss, dollar CAD, for example, if that's those are the currencies you want to buy the dollar against. But getting into some fundamental analysis, um, what's um, keeping the dollar on track is the US state jobless claims post larger than expected declines. So applications decreased by 51,000 to 340, uh, sorry, 364,000 uh, uh, last week. And Pennsylvania showed biggest drop in initial jobless claims. So applications for the U.S. state um, uh, unemployment insurance fell last week by one uh, by more than projected, reaching a fresh pandemic low, and suggesting that dismal uh, dismissals, sorry, are um, are abating as the economy reopens and labor demand rises. So initial claims in regular state programs decreased by 51,000. Uh, so Labor Department data showed on Tuesday the medium, uh, median uh, estimate in a Bloomberg survey of, econo um, of economists called for 388,000 initial applications. So, um, you know, the drop is um, in applications is consistent with improving business conditions and companies' efforts to increase headcounts to meet demand as the economy reopens. Yeah, so generally it's positive. There was uh, a decent positive uh, number, employment number as well, that came out on the Friday. So um, it's really about uh, just continuing on, potentially looking for pullbacks, um, as in the short term anyway, um, and look for buying opportunities. Um, one of the things I also wanted to talk about was uh, peak central bank support uh, marks new phase for world recovery. And what that generally means is that um, we are coming out of the phase where gradually, where um, stimulus is potentially a thing, I won't say a thing of the past, but it's going to be slowly reduced, right? So um, central banks are not necessarily printing money infinitum. In fact, they're looking to reduce the amount of money they print that supports the economy. And I went over this last week. If you watched last week's uh, video, um, I did cover this but also we had an updated um, um, uh, article in Bloomberg and this was uh, today, 4th of July, it's the beginning of the end of easy money. Why is that important? Because easy money is has the effect of devaluing a currency, right? So if you're devaluing a currency, which all central banks were doing during the uh, uh, the, during the virus, then um, you get generally um, uh, weaker prices, but you get higher inflation. Now, the Federal Reserve and other banks around the world are trying to battle inflation due to their uh, due to their money printing, and the inflation is just basically devaluation of a currency. But what's interesting is that Bloomberg have a central bank outlook and uh, how interest rates would change by the end of 2022. So they've got a bit of a map, map. I'll zoom in a bit. And uh, these are the expectations so far for hiking rates. And remember I said that hiking rates generally has a positive uh, effect on the uh, on the currency and the expectation of hiking as well is like a buy the rumor, sell the fact scenario. So if you expect a central bank uh, to, to hike rates sooner than another other central bank that might be lagging behind, then the, the idea is to buy the currency that is looking or the, or the bank um, that is looking to high crates first and sell the ones that are looking to high crates last that are lagging behind. So at the moment, you can see on this map, on this map, sorry, you can see that the UK potentially um, there's there's the, the rumor is that they may hike in 2022. Of course, we'll get onto the pound um, a bit later. But the Federal Reserve um, aren't necessarily looking to cut, um, sorry, hike rates in 2022, um, but they are looking potentially in 2023 if uh, if if inflation and the GDP go their way. So um, at the moment, uh, for me, it's the buy the rumor, sell the fact. If you do get a, a bit of a pullback, which hopefully you should do, then it's li literally looking at buying uh, the dollar against the lagging economies. And for me, the lagging economies are the Japanese yen, uh, Japan and uh, Switzerland, uh, the most uh, lagging uh, countries and banks that are lagging behind in monetary policy. So those are the pairs that I'm personally looking to trade against the dollar. Um, if you are looking at short trades uh, for whatever reason, then I would probably say wait for prices to come up to this high and look for a short trade, maybe the 93, 93, 40. 
40s or if prices make lower highs and lower lows yeah so something like this then uh, and you want to again look for confluence is not necessarily trading the dollar uh, the dollar index but if you do see a confluence where prices do come up on the dollar index and then they start to sell off um, and you're looking for short trades on any other uh, dollar cross then that's what you're looking for uh, as confluence moving on to the dollar yen and again dollar yen uh, again i said this last week if you check out um, last week's uh, video saying that you can't expect um, from a fundamental perspective and fundamentals is, is what is driving the currency yeah this is what drives the currency um, getting short fine that's okay from a technical analysis perspective but how far do you think prices are going to go to the downside if you have one central bank that is hiking rates and another one that is looking to hold rates the money is going into the upside and again as i keep repeating to traders it's not about the technical solely you have to understand where the money is going and you can't understand where money is going it's impossible to understand where money is going if you don't understand fundamental and risk sentiment analysis in the in the medium to long term right so yes there was probably some money to be made but the most money was made to the upside this is how you can predict trends this is why the trend is happening because one central bank has the expectation of hiking rates and the other is holding rates so the money is going to go in fact their japan is lagging way behind so the fed at the moment are in the lead hence the reason why this is seen as an absolute bargain and you're seeing prices go to the upside i can delete this and then what you're looking for now or what i'm looking for is a pullback to a demand zone yeah, and understanding fundamentals makes things just so much clearer when deciding on the direction that you want to trade in yeah He's looking for a pullback if we can get one down into that zone there before looking at potential zooming in and looking for uh, some long trades on a lower time frame. Or if that price, you know, that zone doesn't work out then and nothing has changed fundamentally, then just look for uh, a lower zone. That's it. That's basically what we're doing is looking at bargain prices. Nobody knows where the market is going to turn around. No one knows. All we do is we wait for prices to come down into a zone. We think we want to be a buyer. And if the market agrees with us, hopefully they do. They thought it was a bargain here. Why? Because prices made new highs. So if prices come back down here, anyone who missed out on this bargain is probably going to look to buy in. And anyone who bought in here anyway is going to look to add into their position providing that the fundamentals and risk sentiment remain the same so that's the probabilities probabilistic nature of trading i'd say again it's not going to turn around here but that's the idea and that's what we look for when it comes to trading fundamentals with technical analysis if you do want to get short then you have to really kind of wait for proof of value wait for the market to prove that there is some supply here also as well wait for maybe some risk off sentiment right meaning there's uh, some sort of maybe major outbreak in in coronavirus some sort of trade war and then you're looking for a pullback into that zone and then uh maybe a short there because the japanese yen does well in a risk off environment it's known as a safe haven currency and um and so you can uh look for that as confluence but while we do have uh you know the the data supports the narrative meaning that the data is supporting the dollar jobs gdp um are growing um then we should have the path to the least resistance should be should be to the upside for now um looking at the dollar swiss the dollar swiss Again, we've got a bit of a pullback on Friday. Many traders will be thinking to themselves, well, if 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 the dollar is doing so well, why did the market pull back on the on the Friday? And this is just due to liquidity, right? When you look at, and I was explaining to the guys in my private group, when you look at uh, price and where it'd gone for the rest of the um, for the for the whole week, um, you you everybody can't be long, right? So you need you need sell orders to facilitate more buying and if the retail trader right is looking to buy then generally right where are the sell orders the sell orders are going to be above the market or below the market that's what's known as liquidity so what tends to happen is is first of all we had a trending market all week yeah and so the smart money had known to make money from here to here then what you get is good news right retail traders buy at highs because this would have been the market high and then the smart money can just basically take profit 
and reload once prices come low because who wants to buy at prices up here when you can buy the, the, the dollar Swiss somewhere around here, right? That makes more sense, cheaper price. So um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just how the market works. It's not gonna be all the time, but you have to understand where you are, the location of trading, yeah? So I'll give an example, a quick example of, of, of what you probably would wanna do when you're buying, um, uh, when you're, if you are trading news, what you wanna see is in fact the opposite. If prices have been coming down, yeah, if prices have been coming down like this into a demand zone and then we saw positive numbers, that's when you want to look to buy. But when you're looking at buying at highs, how much higher is prices really going to go? The money and the liquidity is to the downside, is stopping everybody out, drawing traders also into the short side so that they can do what? Buy as well as there is selling going on. And all they'll do is they'll wait um, and wait for prices to go higher, right? That's it. They can buy for cheaper. That's the mechanics of um, of trading the news, which I go into in a lot more detail in my private members uh, group. Anyways, uh, again, dollar is probably the one to buy for me. So pullbacks are welcome. Um, um, if you're in that trade, you're probably not, uh, not 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 liking that and being stopped out on the Friday. Probably scratching your head as to the reasons why. But uh, from someone like myself, I'm looking for pullbacks. I'm not buying at expensive areas, so for me, this suits me quite nicely. If we can get a bit more of a pullback into this 91 area, 91.80, 91.40, for me to be a buyer to the upside. If you are looking to short for whatever reason and buy the Swiss franc and think that the Swiss franc is an absolute bargain against the US dollar, then now pretty much is the uh, time. Maybe a bit of a pullback on a lower time frame before looking at getting short. Moving on to the uh, dollar CAD. The uh, dollar CAD, again, um, for me, the, the CAD is also looking to high rates. The Bank of Canada looking to high rates. So it's not necessarily a pair that I particularly like, even though there was a supply zone and prices did come back up this week and then react from it and go and go short for me this is probably a harder trade to take um not say i'm even taking this pair i'm looking for clear divergences strength versus weakness when you have strength versus strength or weakness versus weakness it's not really a, a currency pair i look to trade so um for now we do have a bit of a supply and demand zone you probably may see some sort of range for now depending on um, again, um, uh, central bank policy for me, probably the Canadian dollar a bit ahead of the US dollar, but um, it's not really a pair that I would like to trade um, from a fundamental perspective. It's not really clear, but if you do want to get long or short, you're pretty looking at these zones in and around uh, here. So the lower end being uh, one, two, two, fives, and the higher end being one, two, four. Uh, 1.2485 areas or 87 areas for you know um, uh, long or short trades. Moving on to the dollar, oh, skip the jump the gun, uh, New Zealand dollar, US dollar. And New Zealand dollar are actually seen as one of the currencies and one of the central banks from a monetary policy perspective that are uh, going to high crate sooner than the, uh, than the rest, right? So Again, I was saying last week that once prices came out of the zone, this was a, a zone to potentially look for a buy trade. Um, I wasn't interested in this currency pair, even though I am long on the New Zealand dollar against uh, weaker currencies. Um, but you can see pretty much what happened. Prices came down into this nice demand zone, and then we've got a nice potential buy. It would have been a tough buy, especially in the face of positive uh, dollar news. But um, for me, uh, again, it's not really a currency pair I'm interested in trading. But from a technical analysis perspective, um, it was a decent zone to look for any kind of long trades. If you are long New Zealand dollar, then that's really the trade. If you're looking to short the New Zealand dollar against the uh, US dollar, then we do have a bit of a supply zone right there above you. But again, similar to the dollar CAD, you have two strong currencies competing against each other. So for me, it's not as clear where prices should go. So for me, from a currency selection uh, perspective, I'm not really interested in this currency pair to trade. Um, dollar, um, sorry, pound dollar. And again, there was a, um, a bit of weakness on the pound um, and uh, again, some uh, some positive sentiment around the dollar. So you've, you're seeing again the reaction of that, right? This 
weekend of last week. Also, as well, your the um, the the pound. I think the pound. Um, Haldane says UK a dangerous moment as inflation heads to four percent. And the bank, uh, the Bank of England's chief economist urges action in final speech. I think he's left now. So thinking on inflation at central bank is starting to shift. Also, as well. Um, so, this, so, so basically, inflation is becoming a problem, um, not just in the US, but all over um, the world due to the massive money printing that's been going on. So um, Haldane is warning about high inflation. Now, the problem that central banks have is that they also need um, the uh, economy to grow. Yeah, so they need economic growth. Um, and so by having economic growth, you can, um, if you can, hi if you want to high rates, businesses can absorb high rates. If businesses are still struggling and they're not growing, and then on top of that, you want to hike borrowing costs and lending costs, then it hurts uh, the recovery. So central banks uh, keep an eye on GDP and they really want growth. So if, if, if inflation is getting out of hand, they also need to see the economy growing. Inflation becomes a problem when the economy is not growing it's what's known as stagflation now um luckily for the for the uk they are on the growing path um the ex, the uh, recovery path so um it's really about a wait and see approach i think that they're going to have and uh, the bank of england governor andrew bailey came out uh, last week in a speech and said that he is looking to potentially um just look to hold and see what happens and wait to see what happens with inflation as they think it is transitory meaning it's probably some sort of you know temporary spike um but let's see what happens this pair though um, again for me technically isn't fantastic I'd probably look for if I was looking for any kind of buy trade um, uh, actually matter of fact that might look like a bit of a stop hunt yeah I think that was probably a bit of a stop hunt there um, and then you could actually see a potential buy we don't necessarily trade stop hunts or I talk about stop hunts in this uh, weekly video but for the uh, guys that are in the uh, private member members group that would definitely look um, that definitely is a, a decent stop hunt uh, uh, trade if you are looking to go long on the British pound but from a supply and demand zone perspective we did come down into a, a decent demand zone this zone has been used a few times um, so not fantastic but um, I think for me I would rather probably look for this 136 area before looking at any kind of long trades personally I'm not really interested in this currency pair um, again simply because you've got two uh, strong currencies and two uh, central banks that are looking to high rates soon. So for me, I'm looking for a central bank that's looking to high rates, one that's looking to either hold rates or even cut rates. I don't think anyone's really cutting for now. So it's about anyone who's definitely looking to hold and lagging behind on monetary policy as to where my, uh, how I select my trades. But if you are looking at getting um, long pretty much now or just around that uh, 137 down to that 136 level is probably the better area to look for any kind of long trades. I think personally, even though now is, is decent, uh, from a short trade perspective, I do like this 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 uh, 140 area, 13950 uh, for a short trade technically, but I just don't like it from a, a trade, a fundamental trade selection um, perspective. And um, moving on to, let's move on to, the uh, the euro right euro dollar and uh, euro dollar before we get into the euro dollar just to let you know that the um, mentoring starts tomorrow so enrollment starts July the 5th um, and really if you do want to take your trading to the next level understand about how to apply fundamental analysis and really kind of predict longer and medium term trends um, this really is the course for you as well as uh, getting mentoring jump into the uh, discord group as well which is um, which we basically start to, you know, just discuss on, you know, tr from from trades to um, general discussions and mentoring. Also, as well, you'll get access to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet, um, which really we go over our economic data. We rank our pairs. We can also choose the best pairs as well as look at uh, forecasts. 
And then once we've done that, we look towards um, certain uh, bank forecasts like Citibank is about maybe about 10 banks we look at at the moment uh, where we match our fundamental analysis with theirs for Confluence, Citibank being one of them. And we look at their analysis. We also look at, again, various other banks, maybe about nine, 10 banks. MUFG is another one. So again, our mentoring opens, my mentoring opens tomorrow. And um, there's there's hundreds of hours of uh, video content, stop hunt manipulation, capture pain relief, as well as supply and demand zone strategies. Uh, this isn't for everyone. There's a lot of work that gets it, that goes into this. If you're one of those traders that think you're gonna get a quick fix and just try and learn something in about a week or two, please don't bother, don't, you know, save your money. Uh, seriously traders only if you've got the time to learn fundamental analysis this is not some sort of silver bullet where you can learn it in like you know a day or two um, this can take months to learn um, this is not a, uh, a shortcut um, uh, uh, course this is not, not nothing to do with just technical analysis only this there's a lot to learn and if you can't put in the time and you're not going to put in the hard work do not waste your time and do not waste my time right so um serious traders only um and this will only be open for a certain amount of time as well probably two two weeks i mean i might keep it open for because i do like to keep my group uh, quite small and focused so you've got a limited time to get involved if you are serious so let's get back onto the euro dollar in the euro dollar um last week we did see prices kind of react off of this um this zone here but uh, prices did go uh, through that demand zone and again I talk about this all the time right there's no demand zone or supply zone that's going to stand in the way of fundamental analysis and the and Europe are lagging behind the uh, the US right when it comes to monetary policy you've had the Fed talk about hiking rates and in fact the um, the European Central Bank have, are, are quite dovish they're lagging behind with regards to their economy etc and one of the problems that they have is that um well euro area inflation slows below two percent in dips seen as temporary in fact that might actually be considered uh, positive in the in the short term but uh, in order for the central bank to really kind of high crates or look to high crates first one of the things that they really need is for inflation to go above their two percent target and b they need the uh, the economy to really kind of pick up so um eurozone inflation called in june to temporarily ease concerns that the bloc's economic reopening uh, will fuel price growth uh, though economists expect the pressure to gather pace again in the second half of the year and i would probably uh, say the same so inflation stayed below the two percent in june two percent being their target so um, it puts less pressure i guess on the um, on the eurozone to have to want to raise rates or or, or anything like that but they are lagging behind um, central banks like the federal reserve the bank of canada and the um uh, and in new zealand the Res um, reserve bank of of new zealand so again if you're looking to buy the us dollar right and sell europe why would you expect this demand zone to hold right the likelihood and i say likelihood and the probability is that it probably would go beyond that demand zone because what are the smart money doing they're looking to buy dollars right so you can't expect to start just buying at random supply and demand zones that's, that's just that's just not how it works that's a lower probability trade so that's the reason why that demand zone uh was was taken out so the path of these resistance is actually to the short side so any kind of pullbacks look for potential short trades if you are looking to uh, trade this currency pair if you are looking to buy this currency pair there is a demand zone right again this, my advice isn't financial advice you can do really what you want not to say that prices won't react from here because there's probably going to be some profit taking going on here but in general this the the the, the smarter play is to look for potential um uh, short trades until the ECB, the European Central Bank, really start to have more of a hawkish uh, shift when it comes to um, uh, 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 monetary policy. But until that day, um, my bias would be to the short side euro dollar, and you're seeing this because this is pretty much what happened again once when the Fed made their um, hawkish speech, right, regarding potential 
uh, rate hikes look at what happened this is exactly what happened this isn't because there was a pin bar or an engulfing candle at this zone here that has nothing to do with anything prices move due to fundamental and risk sentiment analysis anyways um those are your choices personally i do think this 119 uh 26 area this supply zone is a really nice zone to get involved in potentially short so as long as again if prices do come up there and the fundamentals are the same um, then that's a nice shorting opportunity if you want to trade that pair euro yen euro yen um i think the euro might suffer probably some a bit of weakness i do like this zone though down into this 130 area from from a technical analysis perspective i'm not really um a bullish on the euro but if i was it would be against the japanese yen so i'm probably waiting for any kind of pullback into this zone down here the 130 50s 130s before looking at potentially establishing some sort of uh, long trade um, but in a in a risk off environment, the Japanese yen will do really really well. So just be careful if you are looking to get long on on this currency pair, and we are in a risk off environment because you should want to see prices start to continue going to the downside. For now, um, you've got two currencies that I think again are generally in the same direct going in the same direction from a monetary policy perspective which should mean that you may want to enter into some sort of range so that might be the range here or it might the range might basically start and end from here but regardless of where the, the range starts and ends this would be the area that i would probably look to establish any kind of long trades if i'm looking to buy the euro uh moving on to the australian dollar us dollar and again, I think the Aussie, there is an Aussie, um, the RBA uh, central bank meeting, which is actually expected to be quite dovish, right? They're, they're not as uh, as hawkish as the um, the Fed or the um, uh, or the uh, New Zealand bank or even the Canadian bank. So uh, there are, there should be, I say should be, but um, the analysis that we've seen from uh, from the banks is that there may be potentially more downside potential. Um, coming into play around a 74 especially against the dollar being quite hawkish so that's really the play I don't know whether it's going to do that whether it's going to go up or then go down but it also depends on their speech if they are dovish as dovish as the um, as, as they come out right but if they're not then you should see the Australian dollar start to move higher it really just depends on the central bank's speech so uh, from a technical analysis perspective, if you are looking to continue on and, and uh, shorting this pair, I do think that this 76 zone is a really nice area to look for short trades. I do think there are better trades to buy the dollar against rather than the Australian dollar. But if this is one of the, the pairs that you do trade, then I do think that the poverty resistance for now anyway, until the, uh, uh, the central bank come out and uh, they are either dovish, hawkish or neutral, probably to the downside i am bullish on the australian dollar against other currencies though not against the uh the us dollar so buying opportunities now or just down at the 74 demand zone or looking for any short trades around this 76 area australian dollar um uh, japanese yen so again nice last week was a nice buying opportunity around here prices did come back actually down into this demand zone which is actually quite a wide one but uh there was an opportunity to look for potential more buying in that zone there um for me i do want prices to come down a bit more before looking at um, long trades if i'm looking to buy this currency pair simply because this area has been touched several times and so i think the 82 round number i think and, and just below that for me is a really nice zone unless we create higher highs higher lows and then i'm looking for a pullback into a demand zone before looking at getting long but i need to see proof of a value before looking at getting long proof of value pov right meaning that this area proves to be a bargain if prices make new highs so that's what i'm looking for uh, from a short trade perspective if again there's some risk off sentiment then this zone this 8450 area and just to the 85 uh, 80 is going to be a decent zone to look for any kind of uh, short trades within there but as long as risk remains on the australian dollar is the currency to buy and as long as the uh the the 
the um, RBA aren't too um, uh, dovish on their um, this week with their speech. And finally, we've got gold, and gold um, is probably looking at more downside if the dollar is looking at more upside. We did get a bit of a, 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 a bit of a pullback, but as you know, pullbacks are for traders to look to potentially sell. So uh, let's see, we've got that one there. Yep. So from this perspective. Again, buying gold or selling gold really depends on um, whether you believe the dollar is going to go higher or lower, yeah, or um, inflation is going to get out of hand. So if inflation continues to rise, yeah, even if the, the Federal Reserve are trying to talk down the, uh, the, the the dollar, or I should say talk up the dollar and try and increase its value to drive down inflation, if that's not working, then and inflation still starts to rise, then you could see this. Actually, this could be a really nice buy, um, or this could have been a really nice buy for gold. But again, you'd have to have that view beforehand. But as long as the uh, the dollar, the expectation for a higher dollar is on the cards and uh, a rate hike, then um, money will probably continue to uh, come out of gold as well. So um, this actually is a decent shorting opportunity probably on the lower time frame like the hourly for example just look for some um uh, uh short trades here and for um, the guys in the group who are watching this many of you will see a stop hunt above that level right the stop hunt setup is above this area this 1800 area for a short i'm not going to draw it out for the guys that are not in the group but um for the guys that are in the group will know the setup so um really really nice trade uh, level coming up potentially on that hourly time frame for a short and if you do want to get short on the uh, on gold which is basically just another way of going long on the dollar and again gold um, looking at the uh, uh, some um, some fundamental news gold heads for worst month since 2016 on dollar strength and again everything else pretty much talking about right so morgan stanley sees metals below 1700 an ounce um in the second half non-farm payrolls on friday will be key uh, uh key point of data for gold so hawkish pivot gold has the biggest monthly decline so hawkish meaning that the um the fed are hawkish hiking rates so um yeah it's um it's it's not looking good for gold you know in the maybe the the, the short term um but uh, morgan stanley is saying 1700 potentially the second half so this is pretty much where 1700s are so if there is any kind of trade to be had yeah that could actually be the trade and again you have to understand that the data right the data must support the narrative meaning that there's no point in getting short if um if all of a sudden the uh, you don't believe that the dollar is going to get um, stronger and the data that comes out for the dollar so for example jobs employment unemployment gdp if that starts to you know go down or, or is negative um then actually you want to start to buy gold right yes so you want to start to buy gold but as long as the data supports the narrative so as long as the the the, the, the data supports um a positive dollar uh, strength gdp growth um, inflation potentially is coming down then you do want to look for potential short trades that's going to be the path of least resistance anyways guys that's it for this week um hope you guys have a great trading week again don't forget to like subscribe and share and uh, the mentoring opens tomorrow there is uh, a criteria for you to enter i'm not accepting any and anybody please adhere to that criteria um when you when you join if you don't adhere to that criteria uh then don't be surprised if you know it isn't for you right because i've, I've warned you i've pre-warned you that this is not for everybody don't think that you can just come in and um and start uh you know making up your own rules and regulations and things like that right so adhere to the rules unfortunately if this is not for you it's just not for you look for there's hundreds and thousands of other courses and people that you could mentor you and uh you know good luck with that but please don't waste your time don't waste my time if you're not prepared to put in the hard work anyways guys take care and i'll speak to you all soon